Right, so, a um, bit of uh, consumer advice, uh, because it is the, the, the question I get asked most of all, which is, um, what laptop to buy? And the honest answer I can give, and really the best answer I can give is, well, I don't know, because well, I honestly don't know, without actually looking at your situation, what you use a laptop for, you're pretty much on your own in terms of what laptop to buy. But what I will do is I'll try and quickly run through the brands to uh, definitely go for and those to avoid, and also what specs you're going to be looking for depending on what you're doing. So in terms of brands then, um, my current laptop is a ThinkPad. It's a ThinkPad, the ThinkPad line from Lenovo, which is fantastic. Um, unfortunately though, Lenovo's consumer end, uh, end of the market is a pile of crap, so you sort of want to avoid them if you can. Um, it's a shame really because the ThinkPad, ThinkPads are fantastic, best, probably the best laptops for the money you can get. I mean, whether or not they're value for money, I don't know, but they are definitely built like brick houses, built like an Abrams, and you can chuck it around. I've had mine for mine for a year now, and it's second hand, and it's like four years old now. It's just brilliant, fantastic machinery, fantastic, um, fantastic product. The only downside to it is the cost, and also it doesn't. It's not a looker. It does the job. It's a utilitarian device, but it's usually used for business. Fantastic line of products. If you can afford it, um, then definitely go for the ThinkPads. A different recommendation on my part. Um, second of all is HP. Now HP do tend to be quite popular with students, especially the consumer line products. Um, having working in a in a in a higher education establishment, there does seem to be a prevalence of HP laptops that are owned by students. Uh, there's probably a combination of uh, value for money, uh, build quality and just general looks because HP machines do tend to be lookers they do tend to be reasonably good money and you do tend to get damn good specs for the price you get as well um, so they're very good value for money the, the build quality is amazing um, and well I mean HP has been in the game for quite a while now and uh, and they make some fantastic desktops uh, as well as laptops so it's, it's definitely a good brand to, uh, to stick with um, also, and then uh, there's like a, another group of brands you sort of want to, if you're going to going to buy them, buy their top end, not the bottom end. Um, and those two brands are Toshiba and Sony Vio. So basically, you really want to be spending about seven hundred pounds as buying their business line ones, because the bottom line ones are uh, the Sony Vio C class, definitely, or a pile of crap. The Toshibas, because um, we've got uh, with every student that joins Margin, they get a free laptop. This year it was Toshiba's, uh, really, really cheap Toshiba's, and next year's going to be really, really cheap Toshiba's. Now, from what I can gather, it looks like about 10% of the 1,000 um, we uh, ordered, so that's about 100 we've had back, um, either through hard drive failure, um, hard gen generic hardware failure, or whatever. Now, whether or not that's because of student heavy-handed use, not too sure, but it does seem to be that the Toshiba's seem to fail quite a lot. Um, Sony, on the other hand, um, I don't think I've ever had a Sony. I mean, Sony's aren't generally quite popular anyway in terms of laptops. They don't tend to make up uh, the majority of uh, majority of what consumers actually want and, and have, in my experience. But um, their consumer line products, so I've never had them break. I've, I've had one myself. It's never broken, but the build quality is a pile of crap. It look, really does look like it's it's sort of put together ridiculously cheaply and sold for a quite a markup because they're not the cheapest machines around. You can be spending £600 and be getting a Core i3 which is really quite rubbish because you're also getting thrown in only 4 gigs of RAM and probably a 250 gig hard drive at the same same time so you're not getting value for money there. Um, and then there's another line of, uh, line of products which is the real cheap, 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 cheap but very good spec laptops which include Acer. Now Acer are quite good in terms of um, uh, costing, I mean they're insanely good value for money in terms of you know, what specs you get for the price but the the price you pay is obviously the reason it is that low is because you're paying for cheaper components, cheaper labour and an overall cheaper build quality. At the same time though Acer are, all ca are catching up with the HP consumer line of products and actually getting some really good build quality in there and I've seen some of them that have been pretty damn good. Um, so Acer definitely one to look at, perhaps um, take it with a sort of try and avoid them if you can but if you if you really are stuck for cash and you sort of want you need something with a bit of bit of power then perhaps Acer definitely worth looking into. 
So that's uh, brands then. So what about specs? Well, if you're going to be doing word processing and internet browsing, which a majority of people are going to be doing, you're probably going to be looking at minimum of a Core 2 Duo, um, probably running at about 2 gigahertz, with about 2 gigs of RAM, that's pretty much all you will ever need really, and hard drive, uh, well, essentially, really, hard drives don't really matter in terms of space, unless you've got tons and tons of HD movies, um, a basic hard drive you could probably get away with 160 gig hard drive. Now me, somebody who's got lots and lots of music, uh, more music than anybody else that I know, uh, which is 60 gigs of, of standard MP3s and 40 gigs of FLAC music, um, still won't fill up a um, 160 gig hard drive. So you're probably going to be looking at something like that. Um, obviously if you get something bigger and it gets included in the price then that's fine, but really don't worry about hard drives now because they, most laptops come with at least 320 gigs hard drives. Um, more often than not though, 500 gigs, which is quite a lot when you uh, when you consider well actually what you're going to be putting on it is music and documents. Documents don't take up anything. And uh, music, well, majority of users that I work with and see roughly have about 20 to 30 gigs of music, uh, which isn't very much um, when you consider the size of the drives they're usually rocking. Um, now if you're going to be doing something a bit heavier, um, i.e. Uh, gaming or a um, bit of uh, bit of video editing, say, uh, you look at, need to be looking at the core, uh, the second generation Core i3, uh, i5, and i7 processors. Core i3 is sort of uh, you, you're basic in in that it can it can do gaming, just not as advanced. Um, you tend to get lower. Uh, lower speeds with that as well um, and then again probably 2 gigahertz upwards but I think they they don't even start at 2 gigahertz I think it's 2.2 is the, the lowest you can go on that so um, you don't have to worry about that too much um, unless you're gonna I mean if you're gonna be doing lots of really really hardcore gaming Core i7 is definitely what you'll be rocking um, probably about 8 gigs of RAM the top end 4 gigs mm, probably for the majority of people if you're gonna be doing video editing or gaming 4 gigs will probably do you fine. If you're doing some real hardcore game, playing Crisis, etc., probably 8 gigs is uh, definitely worth looking at. Um, even if you uh, don't need uh, the 8 gigs, though, if you can get some special deal where you can upgrade to 8 gig, go for it because it will make a difference in terms of performance compared to 4 gigs and definitely compared to 2 gigs. You'll notice a huge performance boost on that. Um, now, graphics wise, unless, again, unless you're going to be doing anything majorly gaming and video editing wise, um, you sort of want to be looking at the Intel chipsets, uh, they tend to be reasonably packed into most things now. You can get some ATI, uh, ATI chipsets which again will do you, if you're doing word processing and, and surf the internet and doing flash content that's fine. If however you're doing something a bit uh, bit more advanced, so like gaming or video editing or something like that, you do want to be looking at probably some dedicated graphics. Um, just trying to think what's actually in most things now, probably 6500 um, are rocking a lot of things now. Um, this is uh, I think this is ATI's range, 6500. Um, so yeah, you do. No, that's that's wrong actually. 6500 is Intel's, not Intel, Nvidia's line. I think. I think uh, ATI do do a 6500, but it's quite up. It's quite up the top there somewhere. It's sort of a, on the uh, 200 pound mark on dedicated graphics. Um, but uh, yeah, so graphics don't matter too much unless you're going to be gaming, uh, and if you are going to be gaming, I hope you know what you're talking about anyway, and uh, you probably won't need my advice. But um, finding that, um, I hope that gives you enough enough guidance in terms of that. Um, if you need any more advice, you're quite welcome to pop me an email or at me on Twitter or something like that. My email address is azichill at gmail.com. I'll put it in the link down down there and also if you want to at me on uh, on Twitter it's at Azzy Chill, just at me a link or something like that, I can have a look see whether or not I think it's good value for money and yeah whether or not it's a good purchase in terms of brands, value for money, what specs are etc etc. I'm trying to do what I can obviously get, if I get inundated I won't but um, yeah I'm, I'm quite quite happy to, to help out the uh, the non-technical user if they, if they need to get a laptop. Um, but apart from that, obviously like the video, subscribe, share it to all your friends, follow me on Twitter, and that's it really. Um, happy computing!